Today on Running With James, we're giving you what we promised, my go-to high rock shoes. Now you're excited. I am. He needs it. He's only got a couple weeks. Come run with us. Change your mind, change your life. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Running with James. Today we're joined by the Rock Dog himself from the Running with James podcast, and we are going to get into what are my go-to high rock shoes. Now, high rocks is one of those events where you're going to have to do a little bit of everything, right? You got to run. You got to run. You got to do some fitness. You got to do some fitness, right? You got to be fast. You got to be fast. You need some grip. Grip. But then you also want something that's going to be like kind of not beat your legs up. Right. So trying to find the perfect shoe for that, because it's fairly new sport, has been a little bit of a challenge for a lot of different people. Right. So we've used shoes from Saucony to the Nike Next Percent, um, Puma, Adidas, everybody in between. And so, you know, I think I've really kind of really narrowed it down to some very specific four specific shoes we think are probably the best overall shoes. And then we'll tell you what our favorite is today. Please do. All right. So we're going to start with something you're familiar with. Yes, okay, I am. Um, and a shoe that I've worn uh, for a few different competitions, and that is the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro Three. Right, it's a lot, right? Um, so you've worn this shoe quite a bit. So tell us what what are your thoughts about the shoe? Why do you feel like this could be a shoe that you could utilize for high rocks? Uh, well, I love to run in this shoe first and foremost. The bounce that I get from this thing, mm -hmm. amazing. The upper keeps me snug and fit. Tongue moves a little bit, mm -hmm. but getting the hang of it was easy. Not too, you know, when you tie your shoes right. Okay, pretty much. Um, but there's grip at the bottom of this thing. Okay. Yeah, there is. It's a good so amount of grip. I'm thinking for the sled push and sled pull, which is my biggest concerns mm -hmm. given my stature. Yeah. Just straight, you know, beef. Okay. <laughs> this, I think this would help me out really. And then recovering for the, the actual run. Right. So the longer runs mm -hmm. because you have that extra foam. Cause I think yeah. it's got like 39 millimeter sack height in the, four, uh, in the heel. And I think it's like maybe 33 or so. So it's like, a, I think it's a six millimeter drop. So that's a lot of foam. Yes. And it's a lot of legs on high rocks. It is. So, I mean, the whole event is pretty much all legs, right? So I think these were actually a perfect. We said these were in the top five. I was so thankful because I already have them. Yeah, you do. You do. So have you tried pushing the slide with them yet? I have not actually, because I felt I was going to squish it in my foam. Okay. In my actual training, I don't want to buy another pair before High Rocks. That doesn't make a lot of sense, bro. It does not, actually. You need to train. You need to do the event to make sure it's going to work, right? Yeah, you say that now that I think about All it. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've actually used them in two competitions. Uh, so Tommy and I actually both wore this shoe uh, for the Houston High Rocks last year. We won. We got first place. Um, and so the rubber itself, I think, is good for the sled push. Mm -hmm. The only thing I feel like was a little lacking was on the running portion, actually. Oh, so wow. on the concrete and the George R. Brown, you know how sometimes you'll get kind of like a film of dust, mm -hmm. what have you. So the, sh the corners were pretty sharp, right? So we're turning corners and I felt a little bit of slippage. So I did not feel confident taking those corners. Um, and so for me, uh, I was, I had to slow down. I felt like I had to slow down on the corners. Well, you don't want to have to keep slowing down, speeding up, right? So yeah, I think the shoe did help me overall as far as like not beating me up as much. And it definitely had enough grip for uh, the sleds. But the grip on the concrete, if it got any slippery at all, or if it got like a little dusty, I was a little suspect. So pretty much know where you're going to run at, where your race is going to be at. Yeah. And, and maybe even, uh, you know, depending on like what kind of concrete it is or what kind of venue it is, mm -hmm. you know, this main, I mean, this is a good shoe. Don't get me wrong. This is definitely, I've used it and I would race in it again, but I was just a little unsure on the corners. All right. All right. How about your laces? Were they good throughout the whole time? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I was able to get a pretty decent lockdown fit with them. Um, and you can check our review out for the, you know, all my different details. For me too, the tongue was a little, because it's not attached. And so it was kind of like weird to get it nailed down. Um, but I mean, other than that, I think it was a great shoe. It was a great fit. It's light, it's bouncy, it's fast. Um, so I think the only thing is just a little bit on the, uh, on the, on certain services is not as sticky, but the one you're worried about, it's great. Yeah, and I get the good bounce from my burpee broad jump. Yeah, so I don't think you can go wrong with it, uh, but there are a couple other I like better. Oh, there's more. Yeah. All right, so next we're going to talk about the shoe I wore for the World Championships this past year in Manchester, and this is the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 
two. Um, now you haven't had a chance to wear this shoe, nope. so you know nothing about it. Nothing. Um, what one thing I will say about this shoe is it's very light. Um, it's got, a, I think it's a dope looking shoe too. It's a cool looking like shoe, it. right? The color is really good, um, but uh, the lightness of it, the foam has that nitro foam with the uh, the carbon fiber plate in there, so you get that same spring and bounce. Um, it is a little harsher though, okay, because it doesn't have as much foam as say the uh, Adios Pro Three does. Um, so, you know, as the race kind of develops, you're going to feel the fatigue, I think. Um, but this shoe is meant to go fast. And so you can definitely feel that speed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like of all the shoes I have tried, this one hands down has the best grip. I was, oh, grip. Yeah. The grip on this shoe is like by far unmatched. Right. Oh, wow. And you can also see by how much rubber this thing has down here. So it's covering, see how thick that is too, yeah. right? So that's not wearing down anytime soon. Right. So you're really going to protect that foam, which means you're probably get a lot of wear out of the shoe. So especially if you're concerned about the sled push, sled pull, the grip on this is pretty. It's legit. And also I feel this tongue. It's a softer tongue, right? It's got a little bit of padding in it. Yeah. Um, and now this one, once again, it's not attached, yes. right? But this one seems to kind of lay down a lot nicer because I feel like the way they, you kind of lace, you see how it laces that, uh, the lacing goes into the shoe mm -hmm. or to the tongue. Um, so you can get a much better like lockdown on that tongue. I feel like. I also like the little pad though because my feet do swell a little bit and they. Yeah, they get like just... the laces kind of push yeah. down or bite down on your your yeah. top of your foot. Yeah, for sure. So um, the upper looks pretty. It's thin. It. It's thin. It's thin, but like it looks like it's gonna stay. Yeah. So it is, and so it's it's pretty much the same kind of micro mesh or whatever that the Adios Pro Three has. Um, so the fit was good. Like like the fit was dialed in. Like I really enjoyed the fit. Um, I. This shoe shines going fast, mm -hmm. right? That's what it's meant to do. Try to go easy, try to go slower paces. It's not comfortable, right? But once you start moving, you feel the push on you and you definitely feel that spring from that, look how stiff that is, that carbon plate, right? Yeah. So, um, but like I said, because it doesn't have as much foam as say the Adios Pro 3, right? Um, you can feel the fatigue, I think a little bit more. So I think it just kind of depends on, you know, what kind of racer you are. Um, this one's 200 bucks as opposed to the Adios Pro 3, which is like 250, right? So you're getting a little cheaper price, but you're getting less foam. But I think you get more of the uh, grip mm -hmm. um, and I think you get a better fit, mm. right? So I think so. probably for you, you would probably like this better than the Adios Pro. Oh, snap. I do, I think so, because you're also a lighter person. So since you're lighter, um, the impacts, right? You don't necessarily maybe need as much foam as a heavier guy that might, mm -hmm. Right, like might beat their, themselves up because you're not gonna, you're not beating yourself up as much because you don't have as much weight pounding on your yeah. body, right? So you probably will feel really light on your feet in that shoe. Ooh, all right, this is just number four. Yeah, that's. I think that's, and this we're gonna give you, we're giving to you guys in order of my favorites. Yeah. But yeah, that's number four. So I'd wear that one again in a heartbeat. So it's a good shoe. Man. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, now this is number three on the list, um, or I guess if we're going in order, because there's four of them, right? This is the second one to, from first, right? Um, but this is the Takumi Sen 9. So the Adidas Adi Zero uh, Takumi Sen 9. Um, Come on, this ain't Adios Pro 3. No. Not just a different colorway. Nope, nope. It's the Takumi Sen 9, so it's very similar. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have as much stack. It's a lighter shoe. Um, the upper is very similar. Um, has a completely different outsole on it. Um, and, uh, I would say this is more of like a short distance shoe. So like the Adios Pro 3 mm -hmm. is more like a, like marathon, half marathon shoe, right? Mm -hmm. So it's got the really high stack. This is more of like a 5k, 10k shoe. So a little bit lower stack. Um, so I want to say that this has like 30, it's 33 millimeters in the heel, right? So don't, don't quote me on that, but I think it's 33 millimeters of the heel and like, I think 28 or something like that in the forefoot, 27, 28. So it's the same drop, but a much lower profile on the shoe, mm -hmm. right? Um, it has the same uh, uh, Light Strike Pro on the on the foam or what have you. And you've worn this shoe, yes, right? I so you wore the shoe, you did this one when you wore it and we uh, did a review on it together. So what, what did you think about it? Because I mean, you've worn both. Yeah. What did you feel about that was different about it? Definitely less foam. Okay. And then tongue, same thing with the tongue. This tongue was a little more actually- A little more padded. Yes. Yeah. And the other one. Um, also has a grip on it. Mm -hmm. That's what I can remember for right now. But this honestly looks like the Adios Pro 3's little brother. It is. It's exactly what it is, right? So yeah. it's like that next tier down. Um, so you're like thinking, well, wouldn't the Adios Pro 3 be above this shoe? Mm -hmm. But I feel like 
this has enough stack to give you the protection you're looking for. Um, you get really good bounce. Did you feel the bounce on it? Yep. Yep. Um, now this one has the rods in it. So you can see there's rods in here and just like the Audios Pro 3, but these rods are plastic rods. Okay. Whereas in the Audios Pro 3, they have carbon rods. So it's not, it's not as stiff as the Audios Pro 3. So you get that same propulsion, but you're not having to work as hard. So that's where I say like this is a little bit different than say like the Puma because the Puma, you saw how stiff the Puma was, but this mm. one you can move a little bit more, but you still get that pop. Yeah. So this one's not as harsh as the Puma um, and you get about the same amount of foam, um, but it's actually lighter, right? So this shoe I think comes right under seven ounces. It was like 6.7 or something for a 10 and a half, which is what I wear. Um, whereas the Puma was closer to like seven and a half. Yeesh. So it's quite a bit lighter than the Puma is. Um, and then this grip is legit, right? So this grip right here um, is definitely better than the Audios Pro. You can say it's completely different grip, right? So if you're looking at the two comparisons, right? So completely different grip, um, different profiles. This has the Continental Rubber, which is a lot more aggressive um, and a lot more of it. So you see it's a lot thicker than, say, you know, this one is, right? So you can see how thin that is and how thick that profile is, mm -hmm. right? So... Uh, the grip on this for the sled push is legit um, and there's been no concrete or anything I've ran on where I felt like I was, I was slipping in that shoe, right? So that's why this one is my number two on the list um, is because it's definitely meant to go fast, right? Mm -hmm. I've gotten a, I've gotten two 5k PRs wearing this shoe. Um, I wore it last year for the, for the High Rocks World Championships yeah. when it was in Vegas um, in a different color it was the Takumi Sen 8. Mm. So this is Takumi Sen 9. Um, and this colorway is dope, bro. I like it. That black and that gray. That black on the, the gray on the black, yeah. the like stealthy profile. Yeah. Um, so I really do, and they really haven't changed it from this year to last year. And I literally just got it because it was an updated yeah, color, right. right? And I was like, well, I needed to review it anyway, right? So, uh, but this shoe right here, I feel like is like definitely number two on the list. You can't go wrong with that shoe. And it's 180 bucks. Well, cheaper than right, so it's cheaper than pretty much everything that we have on the list. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, you're probably not going to find this colorway anymore, um, but they have plenty of different new colors and stuff. But I think I got this one for like 95 bucks. Nice. Yeah, because it was on, I got it on sale, right? So um, so I got it for way less than any of these other shoes that I've been racing in. So if you can find it for around 100 bucks, this is a steal of a shoe. And mm -hmm. you're going to get some good wear out of it. I think I have uh, 65, 70 miles on it. Right. So looks almost new, doesn't it? Yeah. Right now I've just been mainly running you get on the track, on the track. Right. So that helps a lot, but, uh, but still, um, it's held up pretty well. All right. So this may be controversial, but I do believe that this is my new go-to shoe for high rocks. And this coming from you is crazy because it's on cloud. It is right. And I don't like on cloud. I've never yeah. liked any on cloud that I've ever worn other than like just like a chill shoe, right? Mm -hmm. Just walk around in, right? With jeans and stuff like that. So um, this is the on, on Cloud Boom 3. Um, Echo. Echo Boom so 3. Sorry, I apologize. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. It, it's higher stack. It's got a P-Bax foam, which is the bouncy kind of foam. Um, it's got the carbon plate. You can literally see the carbon plate in there, right? So it's sandwiched between a layer of the foam. Um, so, but I saw the rubber, the outside rubber. And I was like, maybe this could be a really good high rock shoe, right? So it's got a little bit more stack than the uh, Puma and the Takumi Sen. So I feel like it's it's basically between the Audios Pro 3 and the Takumi Sen, when right? It comes to stack. When it comes to stack, right? So I think this is gonna be right around uh, 36 millimeter stack height, right? As opposed to 33 and 39. Um, it has an extremely aggressive carbon fiber plate in there, right? So the plate basically runs, you can see that kind of, that line, like the curve of the line, and it is, Look how stiff that is. That is extremely aggressive. Right? That is an aggressive stiffness, right? So you can feel that plate like springing you forward when you push on it. So, um, but that foam is really nice. It's a really nice foam. Um, so you definitely love the bounce of the foam. Um, and uh, it has an attached tongue, right? So the tongue lays down perfect. It's the perfect, uh, like, uh, thickness mm -hmm. um it's got the little pocket right here kind of for your heel to come in it has a very aggressive heel counter right so mm -hmm. it's not as thin as some of these other ones so i feel like the fit of this shoe um the bounciness is is definitely good enough to go run, to run fast the one thing i used to hear about on clouds was their shoelaces were too thin you yeah know, how you 
I haven't had any issues with them, right? They have extra holes too, so you can get a little diff different lockdown, oh, right? A little that. more aggressive lockdown if you want. Yeah. Um, so I've had zero. I've always liked their uppers too. Their yeah. upper is yeah, extremely nice. comfortable. Yeah. Um, it's very high quality, I feel like. Um, and I think their issue has just always been their foams. They always had very stiff, heavy foams. Now this one's probably a little more dense than say some of the other ones are, but you feel that bounce. This color. It's tight. Fire is no joke. It's not, man. I thought you were like kind of giving it, making it a little easier. No, it's stiff. That is stiff. Yeah. So I think the only thing that I've had an issue with is I probably, if I bought the shoe again, I'd probably go down half size. Mm. So I got, I wear a 10 and a half. I ordered a 10 and a half and I feel like it's a little bit long in the toe. So if you want like a more aggressive fit, a little more race style fit, you probably want to go down about a half size. Okay. Right. Um, so, and then the grip. Right, so the grip is legit. Right, it's got plenty of rubber on here in the, just the right places. It has that texture. Um, so I have actually trained in this, pushing a sled, pulling a sled. Right, and I've run on tracks. I've ran on gravel, even. I've ran on concrete, wet concrete, um, and I've had zero issues. I'm extremely confident when I'm hitting those corners and running. So I think for me, I think why I'm going to use this one is it has that little extra foam. Mm -hmm. to not feel as beat up as the race goes on yeah. but yet you definitely feel the push when you pick up that pace mm -hmm. right so you can run slower in this shoe i feel like and it doesn't uh, wear you out too much um but where you where it really shines is running fast and running fast for an extended period of time and it's on cloud so what's the price tag so that's the downside yeah. if there was any downside to this shoe it's the price it's 280 bucks nice. so it's the most expensive of all the you know our, our offerings that we're mm -hmm. talking about um but i think i've got i've, I've been wearing this shoe because i've been doing a lot of training and since i've kind of like been trying to since i kind of made the decisions what i was going to wear i'm trying to get more and more used to wearing it like in workout situations so i think i have over 100 miles in this shoe oh wow right so um but it still looks pretty good right so got plenty of wear in it um you can see right like on the edges right right there um, where it's got some wearing, um, but mainly like even there, it's like that's wearing mainly because of there's no rubber on the edges, mm -hmm. right? So, and I've been using it for bleachers and jumping and all that other stuff. So, you know, I think you can get a good 250 miles, 300 miles out of the shoe, um, which is that's a good amount for a for a race day kind of shoe, yeah. right? So you can train in it, you can race in it, um, and then maybe just kind of hold off on how much you train in it, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just raining in a little bit more because race day is quickly approaching. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like three or four weeks away. Yeah. yeah. So, so I want to make sure that this is the shoe for sure and for certain, right? So I'm still throwing that Takumi sit in every now and again, but I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm this is the one I'm going to be wearing. Like I'm 99% sure. You bring both two race day? Or? I probably will. Yeah, I probably will bring it just in case, right? Um, it doesn't hurt to have it in the, in the, in the quiver, mm -hmm. um, but I think this is going to be my go-to. So it's got the most stack. It's perfect in the weight i feel like um, it's not too heavy it's not too light um it's got the grip is money it's a really good grip um and uh it's breathable um so this is probably one of the only shoes um that i wear that i haven't had a point where like i was so soaked in the shoe that i could hear it squishing around <laughs> right and that's most and i'm gross right so yeah. this is probably one of the only ones i haven't gotten to that point yet so that means it's very breathable um and it also means that you know it uh, evaporates the moisture pretty quickly. Well, now that I touched them, I gotta go wash my hands. Thank oh, yeah. you for that. Yeah. Well, I just said this isn't the one that's gross, <laughs> right? So, um, so if you're gonna get, if you want just my favorite, best, best of the best of the best, I think this is it. All right? On cloud. On cloud. All right. If you've made it this far, guys, you're awesome. Make sure that you subscribe. Do all that stuff that you're supposed to do. And here's what we're gonna do. We've changed something in the room. If you see what it is and you notice, comment down in the comments below. First person to do that is going to get 25% off on coaching, three month run coaching. Oh, That's a Rocky special right there. Oh, so you comment snap. below 25% off run coaching. If you can, if you guess right, or you can tell us what has changed in the video from the first part of the video. All right. So here we go. So these are the four shoes that we feel like are the best overall shoes. Um, for high rocks i've tried a lot of different brands i've tried a lot of different from marathon racers to 5k to 10k whatever um, but these are what i feel are the top four okay um best of the best money's no object i'm going with the on cloud mm. okay if you're a heavier person maybe you uh, maybe your running's not where you want it to be type situation you need something that's going to help you on the long end of things i'm going with the audios pro 3 
you're someone who works out a lot, you train a lot and you need something or you want something that's going to cover more, a wider spectrum of stuff. I'm going with the Puma. Um, if you're looking for something a little more cost effective, um, but still fast, still grippy, I'm going with the Takumi Sin. Mm. So what do you think? What are you thinking? I'm thinking about how I need to get started GoFundMe to get these on clouds. <laughs> All right. Okay. I like it. Yeah. So that's what you feel like? No, I mean, I, honestly, it's great. You have four great options. Cost effective. Not so cost effective. Yeah. Getting tired at the end of the race. You have yep. mm -hmm. Yeah. Bounce. Like you said, work out more than you actually run. Mm -hmm. This right got the um, you get you kind of hit all different people are going to be there. You hit all their their needs. Need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Right. Because I mean, there's a lot of people who have knee problems. You're still going to do this race. Yeah. You might want to get the one with the more foam. Yeah. People who who mm -hmm. run a lot. Yeah. Who got the money? Who do it? Go ahead and get the non clout. Right. And there's people who just want to run the race. And you, like you said, if you can get this hundred dollars, you got to steal. You got yours for ninety five. Oh heck yeah, man! So maybe they, someone can find a deal on that too. Yeah, and you really can't go wrong with the Tacoma Center. Yeah, like, and honestly, hundred dollars shoot, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, even one hundred eighty bucks. I mean, like at one hundred sixty dollars, if they had sold it for hundred, they were selling it for. I would say, like, still it's the best deal, right? Yeah. But out of all of these, you know, I mean, it's a hundred dollars cheaper than this shoe is, right? Yeah. Um, it's twenty dollars cheaper than this one. It's you know sixty seventy dollars cheaper than this shoe, right? So. Um, I would pick this shoe over this shoe and it's cheaper than that one, right? Yeah. I would pick this shoe over this one and it's cheaper than this one, right? So, you know, I think the Takumi Sen is probably going to be a really good shoe for a lot of people um, because it is a little more cost effective, but yet it still checks all the boxes, yeah. right? And they have some cool colors too. I mean, they're a little more brighter colors. They have like a teal and a, a white and, you know, pink and, you know. Yeah, Adidas can do that. Yeah, right? So I really dig that colorway too, man. So Adidas is killing on the colorway. So on... You only got one shot. I mean, I yeah. actually like the color. I like the kind of the aesthetic of it, but I mean, they're they're killing it. Yeah, in my opinion, All right? So, any questions? Anything? I got nothing. nothing? I kind of answered everything. All right, sweet. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate you showing up. Don't forget to comment down below. Um, and as always, remember, if you can change your mind. You can change your life. So I was supposed to say that. I, I thought you were going to say the whole thing. Oh. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Sorry. Right. He's just doing the podcast thing we usually yeah, do. Right? All right.